welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Maddie and I love sewing. And today we are recreating the silver dress from The Little Mermaid. Now, this dress unfortunately was not seen in the live action Little Mermaid that came out early last year. However, I have wanted to recreate as many Disney princess costumes as possible and because I live in Europe currently a lot of the locations that inspired the Disney princess movies happen to be here. I'm actually going to be traveling in the next couple weeks. I'm going to be visiting Spain, Morocco, and Portugal and all three of those locations have very beautiful beaches and so I thought this would be the perfect princess costume to take on this trip. The three main features of this dress is the cowl neck, which droops down in a natural way, the knee-high slit, and the high necklined back. Unfortunately, this made it quite difficult to find a pattern that reflected most of these qualities. But the closest thing I found, which I can work with a little bit, is the hyacinth gown located on Mood fabrics.com in their free pattern section and that is the gown we are using today. So you'll notice right away once you see the hyacinth pattern that the dress does not directly look like the aerial dress and that's for two reasons. Number one, the cowl neck feature which is in the front of the aerial dress is actually located in the back of the hyacinth dress so I am gonna have to replicate this back feature in the front instead. Secondly, the front of the hyacinth dress is more of an A-line and heart-shaped silhouette, so I'm gonna have to bypass that completely and figure out a way to turn the center front into a cowl neck. I will not lie to you and not say this is a very fickle project, but unfortunately it is. But it is a very exciting project. Okay, so this gorgeous sequin material is the intended fabric for this project. We have a couple problems here. White and gray doesn't exactly replicate the Ariel's blue and silver dress. So here's the plan. I have three different dyes. So I have a teal dye, a aquamarine dye, and a deep green. Now I think we're going to do a combination of the teal and the aquamarine, but we're going to stick more towards the aquamarine so it remains similar to the silver dress. Uh, but what we're going to do now is cut the pattern pieces out and then we're going to dye them individually. Okay guys, now that we've finished cutting all the materials out, I'm now down in the kitchen and we're going to go ahead and start dyeing. Here is the bag of fabric we are using and I had to carry it down in a bag because there were just so many sequins leaking. But I'm going to go ahead and when I'm dyeing the material, stick the sequins in wrong side out so the silk material goes into the dye first and then the sequin pieces go in last. <laughs> It's been about 30 minutes of consistent stirring since I put this dye bath in and now we're going to go ahead and dump the water into the sink, rinse out the material a couple times, let it dry, and then we're going to go ahead and actually start sewing this project together. Okay guys, so as you can see in the background of me, all the fabric is currently drip drying and we're going to see how this goes and see if there's any patchiness or parts where the dye ends up disappearing in the next couple hours. Once they're completely dried, we're gonna go ahead and start sewing them together. Now, there are two things that didn't go as perfectly planned like I wanted to. The dye looks really, really white in the camera, but there is a deeper aquamarine sheen. Like I said before, I don't really have the exact material to use, but we're still, we're close. We're really, really close. While waiting on the fabric to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and head back upstairs and start cutting out the lining. So the fabric we're using for the lining is this periwinkle sheet, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut these pattern pieces out, and then I will meet you back either later this evening or tomorrow to give you an update on the sequin material. I have cut all the lining pieces out and now that they're cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and check back on the material downstairs and see if it's gotten any drier. Hi guys, obviously it's a little bit darker since I checked, but the material is mostly dry, but it still kind of has that wet tacky feeling. I mean, I'm not surprised because it is sequin material, um, but I'm gonna give it about another hour just to check if it dries a little bit more and then we'll see if we can bring it in before it gets really dark outside. Hi 
Hi guys, it is day two of working on creating Ariel's finale dress and I'm gonna start out by sewing the lining together. So here is what the finished lining looks like. Now, if you'll notice, I have a pretty wide gap in the back so I am gonna need to add a panel just to make sure it actually fits. Uh, but once that's completed, I'm actually gonna go ahead and start working on the outer portion of the dress. Okay guys, so now that I have sewn the two side front panels to the center front, I'm going to go ahead and attach the back bodice pieces to the back skirt pieces. Alright, so now that I have sewn the bodice back pieces to the skirt, I'm going to go ahead and attach these together. Okay guys, so I finished the outer portion of the dress and now all I have to do is adjust the neckline and then sew it to the lining. And then the final step that we're doing for this project is creating that faux cowl neck like you see in the original dress design. I forgot to mention, like I said, with the lining there was also a gap so I'm actually going to create another panel for this dress and then attach it to the skirt. I went ahead and attached the extra panels on the lining and on the exterior fabric and now I'm going to go ahead and drape the fake cowl neck on the sequin material. Hi guys! Okay, so the plan for the faux cowl neck is to use this panel of gray sequin material, scrunch it like so on either side, and then sew it on to the neckline like this. Now I think what I'm going to do is sew this on after I sew the outer material to the lining just because I think it'll be easier in the long run. The only thing I need to be careful of is making sure that none of this scratchy sequin material is found underneath the inside of the dress just because my skin is very sensitive and I don't do well with sequins. <laughs> It has been quite a bit since I've updated you, but I went ahead and sewed the lining and the overlay together and flipped them inside out. And then I also went ahead and attached the cowl neck. Now, I'm a little bit frustrated, if I'm going to be honest, because the neckline is a lot higher than I wanted it to be. But the way I think I'm going to fix that is by sewing some really tiny beads in some strategic places to kind of pull it down a little bit and give more of the original inspo like I wanted. I also completely spaced leaving in the leg slit. So we are also going to be seam ripping a little bit to include this slit. Uh, so that's how my day's gone. It took about two and a half hours to get the shoulders and the cowl neck figured out. gonna lie I have not worked on this project in nearly three weeks uh, but she she's got a little work that needs to be done so first and foremost as you can see this collar is just a little higher than it's supposed to be so I'm thinking of pinning it down with something secondly we have about this much room in the back when we really only need <laughs> that much and then thirdly, we also need to hem the skirt. And me being me, I totally spaced that Ariel has about a thigh high slit. So I only figured that out after attaching the two garments together. And then because the day I did it, I was exhausted. I did it on the wrong side. So as you can see, we are in a little bit of a pickle. Uh, but this is what it looks like so far. And I think where we're going to go from here is I'm going to first start by hemming the lining and just cutting all this excess fabric off. If you can see, it's hanging out underneath where it would show and look really tacky. And then once that's done, I think I am going to go ahead and seam rip this part of the dress so that I can have that slit, do the same thing with the lining, and then finally we will attack the back of the dress. Oh, I did forget to mention that I'm kind of just going to assume that wrinkles are a part of this dress anymore, just because I feel like there's no way to get them effectively out. So I'm going to see if I can crinkle it in a way that makes it look like the dress is pre-textured. Uh, but if that doesn't work, we're going to just suck it up and deal with it. Hi 
guys, it's been a hot minute, but I just wanted to show you the progress with the slit. So if you see right now, you can see the blue lining a little bit, but I think that'll disappear once I sew the back together. Hey guys, it has been another day since starting the Ariel finale dress, and unfortunately the corset idea I originally had for the closure of the back of the dress did not work. So here is what we're working with right now. So this is certainly not my favorite way to finish off a dress, uh, but this is what we're going to have to deal with because I'm running out of time, but I went ahead and sewed the zipper in and added a lapel or I don't know the right term but all I have to do left is hem this off so it looks a little bit neater and cleaner and then all we have left for the dress is to hem the skirt. Now there are a couple quirks that I may in fact adjust uh, but that will come in due time. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the zipper off and then from there we will work to hem the skirt. Okay guys, I think we have made an improvement on the zipper and I think this is the best we are going to get for this project with the timeline I have. So all I have left to do is hem the base of the skirt. So I'm going to go ahead and lay it out, do a little bit of adjustment on the hem just so that everything's uniform and then we will go ahead and hem it. Okay guys, so we have finished the dress, but just for an extra detail to add a little bit of flair and to goodness, cover up this kind of rough seam that I made, I'm thinking of adding pearls with my hot glue gun. Hey guys, so I am currently hot gluing these pearls onto the slit of the Ariel dress. I think it adds a lot more definition and is going to make it really, really pop when we're at the ocean. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and keep working on this and then I think we will be done with the dress. So I've been working on this for almost maybe 45 minutes and this is what it looks like on this side so far. I ended up finishing this side pretty quickly, but a lot of them are popping off. That's probably because I'm using like super cheap German hot glue. Hot glue? Yep, like I said, a lot are popping off. Just my luck. Anyway, I'm gonna keep plowing ahead, see if I can get this any better than it is, and hope for the best that they won't all break off in my suitcase before we get to Spain. This dress has been a nightmare. Literally, it has been one of my least favorite things to construct on this channel. Oh my goodness. Like, yeah. The amount of times I redid the stinking zipper in the back is ridiculous and I don't want to tell you because it's kind of embarrassing. All right, that being said, I am going to go ahead and get back to work. Ugh, my foot has fallen asleep. I've been sitting in this stinking same position for like almost an hour now and more of them are still popping off so i'm hoping it'll get better but that's about all we have left from here to here um and then hopefully we'll be done but ah sorry my foot just woke up and now everything's cold does that happen to you i don't know if it's just me like when my feet fall asleep for random things if i sit for a long time and then when they finally wake up my entire body decides to freeze <laughs> like I have goosebumps. <laughs> anyway, uh, back back to the old hot glue gun and we'll see if we can finish this soon. You couldn't tell by the excessive flailing in that last clip. I just totally gave myself a hardcore blister by pouring hot glue on my finger. Ouch, that really hurts. Yay. Oh, the stupid project. I'm really hoping we're almost done. This is, this is becoming a torment. <sighs> Fooey. My finger is screaming at me now that I've finished this project and the blister's just getting worse. So I probably need to go treat that, but there's all these little glue gun driblets that 
this stupid cheap German gun drops as I'm working and it ended up dripping on one of my fingers, hence the reason it's blistering like it is, and jeez does it hurt. Okay, now that we're done, I'll go ahead and show you what the slit looks like and see if I have anything else before I torture myself. <laughs> ah! It still hurts before I torture myself anymore for this stupid project. So I went ahead and bandaged my finger and did you know that with burns you can put a little bit of honey on it? Usually like raw honey I think is the right stuff you use. But anyway, it helps heal the wound faster. Um, but here is what our results looked like. Are they worth the scalding burn? I don't think so, but I think it definitely added a beautiful piece of dimension to the dress. And now I'm wondering if I add pearls to more pieces of the dress. I don't think I want to put myself through that torture though. Well, we are in the dress and I think I've added this. I think I've added everything that I need. My finger is still burning, but I think it'll heal in time, hopefully. I have scars from the stress. Anyway, besides that, I think we've added everything uh, we want to the dress. Why am I talking like there's a group of people deciding this? I think I've added um, everything I want to with this dress. So let's go ahead and go to the final results.